Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna build a 12 volt DIY spot welder by using this 12 volt car battery. So this is actually an Amaron Flow car battery. Uh, has a 433 cranking amps and it's a 55 age car battery. Pretty large, pretty powerful battery. We're gonna use this to build a spot welder. I do have an XC60 connector to charge the battery. So how are we going to build this? The first thing that you need is this uh, relay. This is actually a, car, a bike starter relay, which uh, supports up to 80 amp power, uh, 80 amps actually. So that's the one that I'm going to use. And the other end, I crimped two connectors. Uh, one of the connector would go to the battery positive. So you just have to tie it, uh, tie it to the terminal. And the other end is the spot welding tips. Uh, for which one of the end I actually connected the battery lug. I crimped a battery lug to it. This is actually the BIFRC spot welding tips. Uh, if you remember the previous video, I leave a link on the top. Go check that out. Uh, that spot welder MOSFET actually got burnt because I overused it. So I'm going to use that here. And then this is the uh, coil switch. Uh, the wires where you supply 2 volt to turn off, turn on the coil. So here, what you need to do is you actually have to connect a diode uh, in series to it. So what we need to do is from the negative side, you have to connect a diode to the positive. Uh, the reason is because when you supply a current to the coil and when you cut the current, uh, the magnetic uh, fields actually put some back uh, spike current, so which might uh, uh, spoil your switch. To avoid that, you have to use a diode. So the best way to go about it is just keep the switch and tap on it uh, manually. So let's get that assembled. But before that, uh, I actually used this timer relay first. And before using the setup, I thought of using a timer relay where we can uh, set the specific uh, seconds where the relay has to be turned on and then when it should turn off. So let me get that turned on now. So it's kind of a timer where you set turn off turn on time so on this case uh, what I did was uh, the least uh, that it can go for was like 100 millisecond that's 0 0.1 second that's the least that it could go so whenever the red light flashes right uh, the relay is turning on and the connection is made so I thought I'll use this but even that 100 millisecond was quite long so it wasn't sufficient the 100 millisecond timing is pretty long so i stopped using this so i thought uh, just manually tapping is much faster than this uh, relay if you're able to get a smaller relay which has a le lesser uh, milliseconds where you could set it for like say around like 50 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds maybe you could go with that but the easiest is just go with this manual thing guys just tap on the switch and it gets connected so let's get the connections made. So one of the lead would go to the negative IO. So that's the negative end where I have connected one of the spot welding tips. One of the relay wire would go to the positive side so one of the side would go to the the silver side which is uh, moving towards should be the positive side so that's the positive end and uh, I'm actually using some alligator clips now to hold the uh, negative side because that's where I'm connecting a switch this is just a temporary setup. So once you fully assemble it, you could actually uh, solder and connect, use the connectors for the wires. So let's bring, get everything in focus now. So that's the switch. You just have to tap it. You could hear the relay turning on, turning off uh, whenever I tap it. So you hear the relay turning on and turning off. So this is much faster than that uh, um, timing relay, guys. So 
let's get the positive side connected as well so this is the sp two spot welding tips so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to hold this uh, in one of the hand and then i'll control the switch on the other hand so let's get a battery i've been using this battery for testing the spot weld uh, strength uh, if you see there are too many spot welds on the back because I have been uh, beating the heck out of the battery by using that uh, uh, spot welder. So finally I was able to settle down this. That's the reason why I'm sharing this. But if you see uh, I have been using these many nickel strips to actually test out each uh, settings. So finally I, I settled down with this. Uh, that's the reason why I'm making a video. So I'm happy with this one. So just hold the uh, tips together and do a quick small tap that's enough two taps that's enough the spot welds are spot on it's pretty strong you have to put your f entire force to peel that out even that actually strips the a nickel strip itself so this actually works pretty well pretty well than any other spot welders that i had been using so i'm just going to do another spot weld as well so just hold it and tap it that's it it's pretty simple So if you see this one is also pretty strong and I cannot peel this out uh, by hand. I cannot actually do that. I had to use a nose plier to pull it out. And the spot weld is not going to go out anywhere. And this is the easiest and the uh, smartest way to do it. Uh, if you see after pulling it out it actually the, the nickel strip is still welded to the battery end. So let's pull that out. So let's also uh, spot weld the positive side. Now guys, what I'm thinking is that uh, now I can't be uh, holding this together every time. So I'm planning to build actually uh, a 3D uh, case or something where I could put the tips together and it holds in place and I can just hold it and just tap it. That's it. So if you see, even this spot weld came out perfect. So this should work, guys. This should work as a temporary workaround for uh, building a battery pack. Uh, the only thing is that uh, uh, the switch might go out. But I mean, as far as I've been using this, the switch never weared out because we are also using a diode to bypass the extra current out there. So. And uh, to build this, I actually need this uh, uh, relay, which costed me around like around 350 to 400 rupees. You could get it from any automobile shop. And this tactile switch would be around like 20, 22 rupees. That's it. Uh, and solder two wires and you're all good to go. And yeah, the car battery itself. If you have an old car battery, well and good. If not, get a new one. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, do give it a thumbs up and uh, stay tuned.